Hey guys, my name is Matt Bauer. Welcome to lesson five, where we're going to be learning about if statements. So we're gonna start off by making a project, right click, add new project, console app, .net core, and we're going to call this one lesson five. Be sure to select lesson five project, set a startup, and then we're going to rename program.cs to if statement. We'll go ahead and rename our class, delete the hello world line, and we're ready to get started. So an if statement. The if statement is really useful for controlling access to certain code where you only want the program to go into whenever a certain state is true. So for an example, we can think of a video game. Whenever the user presses the space bar, the character is supposed to jump. So only if the space bar is pressed should the player jump. So how do you write an if statement? The basic shell of an if is this keyword if with a lowercase i, two parentheses, and then a set of curly braces. So the curly braces contain all the code that is going to be executed by this if statement. And the parentheses contain a conditional statement. So just like we did in lesson four, where we have a condition that evaluates to either true or false, whatever goes inside of these two parentheses has to evaluate to either true or false. So to give an example, we can put true into here so now, every time the program gets to this if, it's going to say, okay, true. It's going to execute this block of code, whatever I put into here. So we're going to just do a simple console.write line. And inside of it, we're going to say, this will always be true. And below this, we're going to do another if. Notice how I start with the same empty if statement. We're going to go to the condition portion and I'll put in the keyword false. So now when the program gets to this if statement, it's going to say if, and then it evaluates it and it says false. So, okay, false, I'm not going to execute this code. So it's never going to execute this, whatever code I put into this block. I'll put another console right line into here and it will say this will never execute. And if we look, we see that our code is grayed out a little bit. And if we hover over this squiggly, it says here, unreachable code detected. So the program knows that this code is never going to get ran because we evaluate this to false. In order for this to run, it has to evaluate to true like we did up here. So if we run it, we'll see that this will always be true, prints out, and then the program ends because our false if doesn't get executed. But hard coding your ifs to either true or false isn't what they're made for. They're made to hold a conditional statement, something that can be evaluated to either true or false. So what I want to do is I want to take two integers from the user, an X and a Y. So I'm just going to prompt the user to enter an X value. Then I'll declare an integer data type named X, and I will set it equal to convert dot two int 32. And then I'll take a string from the user, console dot read line. And I'm gonna do the same thing, prompt the user to enter a Y value. And then I will say integer Y, convert it, and then use a read line to get the string of text. So now we have two integer values, an X and a Y. Let's think of something we can do with it. So what I want to do is if X is bigger than Y, I want to print out X is bigger than Y. If Y is bigger than X, I want to print out y is bigger than x. So an if has a really cool thing you can do. So we're going to make an empty if statement. And inside of our condition, we're going to put if x is greater than y, I'm going to print something out. So inside of these curly braces, the thing that I know is true is that x was greater than y. So inside of these braces, I can write console dot right line, x is bigger than y, because I know that's true because I managed to get into this block of code. And if I got into this block of code, then this evaluated to true. So now let's say I want to do the opposite. I want to see if y is greater than x. So there's one way I can do it is I can do another if statement, make my empty if, and now I'm gonna go up to the condition and I'm gonna say y is greater than x. So now inside of this block of code, I know one thing is true, that y is greater than x. 
So I'll print that out. Console.WriteLine, y is bigger than x. So we've done two comparisons already, x greater than y and y greater than x, but there's one situation we haven't accounted for yet, and that is if y is equal to x, so if they're both the same number. So let's do that one inside of an if statement. We'll have our empty if, and we'll go up to the condition, and we're gonna say x equals y, being sure to use double equal sign to compare equality. And inside of here, we know something's true. We can do a console write line. And the thing we know is true is x is equal to y. So let's run this. Enter x. I want to do our x is greater than y condition. So we'll do a 5 for x and a 1 for y. x is bigger than y. And let's do the opposite. A 1 for x and a 5 for y. There we go. y is bigger than x. And we have one more, which is they're the same number. So x is 1 and y is 1. x is equal to y. So let's look back. So the computer has to run these three if statements. But there's actually a way that we can simplify this just a little bit. And so I'm going to introduce another keyword, which is the else keyword. So I'm going to comment this out and keep it for a reference. Now I want to do the same thing that these three if statements do, but I want to do it using an else if. So let's come back up. So the, the first part is going to be the same. It always starts with an if statement. So we'll make our if, and we're going to do our condition. And we want it to be the same condition that it was before. If x is greater than y, and I'm going to copy our print string over, x is bigger than y. But now, if x wasn't greater than y, I'm going to say else if, and then do our condition statement and our brackets. So it's the same kind of empty if, except we add an, an else keyword to it. Now we can go into this condition and we can say y greater than x. And I'm going to, going to copy the right line from down here. y is bigger than x. And then we can also say else and just give a code block like this, brackets. So what is true here? Well, let's think about it in English terms. If x is greater than y, then run this line of code. Else, if y is greater than x, run this line of code. Else, run this code. Notice I didn't give it any sort of conditions. It is the default thing that is going to run. So since I know x is not greater than y, because this didn't execute, and I know y is not greater than x because this did not execute, I know that x must be equal to y because we got down to this else statement. So I'll run it, and I'm only going to test the equality. So we'll say x is 5, y is 5, and we see it prints out correctly x is equal to y. And the benefit of using an if else like this is that whenever it gets to this first if, if this evaluates to true, the computer doesn't have to worry about the rest of this. It just skips over these additional checks. So it says, okay, this was true. X was greater than Y. So I know I don't have to worry about the rest of this because he said else. Where whenever we did this, these three ifs, we said, if X was greater than Y, print this out and then we say okay this is a whole new check what if y was greater than x run this code and we say whoa 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 hold up what if x was equal to y and then we run this code when the whole time we might have been able to stop at x is greater than y because we knew it four lines above it and the computer wouldn't have had to run these two additional checks so it can make our code a little bit more efficient and readable i'm going to comment out this portion as well and we're going to start on some more examples. So what I want to do now, let's pretend we're giving somebody a quiz where we ask the person a question and they have to type in an answer and then we have to check if the answer that they gave us is correct or incorrect. So it's going to be a pretty easy quiz. Let's just start with a console.write line and our question is going to be, what planet are we on? The answer to the question, what planet are we on, 
is earth and earth is a string value because it's a word. So we're going to need a string data type and we're going to name it planet answer and we're going to set it to console.readline. So we asked the user a question and then we took the user's input and put it into this planet answer variable. Now we have their answer and we need to actually check it. And so how do we check things? We can use if statements. So we'll make an empty if, go up to the condition statement. So what we want to check here is if planet answer is equal to the string earth. And remember, whenever we compare strings, case matters. So if somebody enters a lowercase earth, then this isn't going to be marked as correct because a lowercase earth is not the same as this capital earth we have here. And that's gonna be fine for this quiz. So inside of this block of code, we know one thing is correct. The input from the user, which we put into planet answer, is equal to the string earth. So we can write console.write line. We can give the user a little bit of feedback. Earth is correct. But I also want to give the user feedback if they get it wrong. And they could have entered a variety of things. They could have said Mars, they could have said Mercury, so many different things. And we don't want to check is planet answer equal to Mars because that's just too much. There's, there are too many different things that they could have put in. They could have put in foods, any number of stuff. And remember how we just learned about else's. They're like a catch all. So we can use our keyword else and our curly braces. So this basically means if their answer was not earth, then we're going to run this block of code down here. So we'll just say console write line will display their answer back to them since we don't know what exactly they input. And then we'll just say is wrong at the end. And let's do another question using an integer value. So I want to ask the user, how many sides are on a cube? The answer to this is going to be an integer and I'm going to name it sides answer and we'll set it equal to convert to int 32 because we need it to be an integer value. And then we can do a console.readline to get the answer from the user. Now we have the answer from the user, which we put into sides answer. So we need to do the same thing that we did above, make an empty if statement. And inside of our condition, I want to do something different. I want to check the opposite of what we did last time. I want to check if they got the answer wrong. So I'm going to say, if the user's input is not equal to six. So six is the answer to how many sides are on the cube. And I want to execute this block of code only if they didn't get it correct. So if their answer was not six, I want to say console write line, mirror their answer back. So your answer is wrong. And now we can do the same thing where we do an else and we have another block of code that executes, but this is only going to execute if this if statement doesn't execute. So what we know is true inside of this block of code is the opposite of sides answer it does not equal six and the opposite of is not equal to is equal to so what's true in here is sides answer is equal to six and we'll just tell the user console.write line six is correct so we've done a string we've done an integer the only one we have left is a double we're going to ask the user to input a number greater than 9.0 so it's not as much of a question as it is a command. And we want to make sure that they followed the rules and entered something greater than 9.0. So the answer to this question is going to be a double data type. We're going to call it nine answer and we'll set it equal to convert dot to double because we need to convert our string to a double. And then we can do our console dot read line. And in all the other questions, whenever we went into the if, we just did our comparison right there. So we did the comparison and then we went into the if. But another thing that you can do is you don't have to do the comparison inside of the if itself. You can just supply it with a Boolean data type. So we'll make a new variable that's a Boolean data type and we're just going to name it 
is correct. So what I want out of this value is whenever is correct is true, the answer to input a number greater than nine is true. So I'm going to set it equal to nine answer is greater than 9.0. So whenever they input something greater than nine, is correct is going to be true. So we can make our empty if statement and inside of the condition, I'm going to put our is correct variable. So is correct. Now, whenever is correct is true, this block of code is going to run the same way that if we put nine is greater than 9.0 in here, it would still run whenever it's true. So we're going to print out to the user, console write line, and we don't know for sure what they input. So we're going to mirror their answer back, nine answer and is correct. And just like in the other questions, we'll need to catch the opposite of this. So else, if the answer was not correct, this block of code is going to run and we'll print out console.writeline, mirror the answer back, is wrong. Now we can take our test. So we'll say, what planet are we on? We'll do the capital E Earth because that's the only thing that'll be right. So Earth is correct. How many sides are on a cube? Let's get this one wrong, five. Five is wrong and input a number greater than nine. So we can say 9.1. 9.1 is correct. So there we have the lesson. And now we're ready to move on to the task. So like always, we'll select our solution, add new project, console.net core, lesson five task. We're gonna select our lesson five task project, right click, set a startup project, and we can rename our program.cs file to if statement task. We'll allow it to rename our class and we'll go to finalparsec.com, go to blog, go to lesson five. We'll see our notes and the associated task. Let's select everything, copy, go back to Visual Studio, select everything in our if statement task file and paste over it. Use console commands to ask the user a question, take their input, then give feedback if the user is right or wrong. It's time to think. This wasn't something that was covered in this lesson, but it was covered in lesson three. I want you to count every correct answer the user gives and tell them the number of correct answers at the end of the program. Make six questions. Make a question that uses one of the following comparison operators to check for the correct answer. And each comparison operator must be used at least once. So have one question for each of these six operators. And if it's hard to think of a question, you can ask things like, what number is greater than eight? Or what number is less than or equal to 8.3? Or do not type ball. Some example output is you ask the question, blah, blah, yes. Another question, no, three, ball, 9.8 and two. And then at the end of the program, it should print out, you got four questions right. Bonus points, if you can also display the number of questions they got wrong. So an example would be at the end of the program, you print out, you got four questions right and two wrong. I'll give you some time to complete that before showing you my answer, and I'll see you in a bit. And here we have my solution. In order to count the number of correct and wrong answers, the first thing I do is I make two integer variables, correct answers and wrong answers, and I set them equal to zero, because whenever the quiz starts, they have gotten zero correct and zero wrong. Then I ask the first question, what planet are we on? And the correct answer is Earth. And if they get it correct, I increment my correct answers by one. I set correct answers equal to itself plus one. And if they get it wrong, I increment wrong answers by one. And my next question is what planet are we not on? And if they do not type Earth, then they got it right. So I increment the correct answers. Else, if they did input Earth, they got it wrong. The other one, what number is greater than eight? What number is less than eight? Input a number greater than or equal to 2.12. And then input a number less than or equal to 2.12. And then I concatenate on the values that I got for the number of correct answers and the number of wrong answers. That's the end of the lesson. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, you can comment down below or get in touch with me on the Discord server. I post videos every Tuesday, and if you like this one, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next week.